Let's see how to calculate the area enclosed by a curve and the y-axis between two values of y. For that, I'm going to work through two examples. And if you watched my previous video on this topic, then the first example corresponds to scenario 1, and the second example we'll see will correspond to scenario 2. If you didn't watch the previous video, don't worry, I'm going to explain everything as I work through these. Now for my first example, let's say we're given the curve y equals to the square root of x. So that's the curve I've drawn here, that's y equals to the square root of x. And let's say for argument's sake that I want to calculate the area enclosed by this curve and the y-axis between y equals to 1 and say y equals to 4. So just to be clear, that would be the area that I'm shading right now. Okay, well for this first example, which again, illustrates the first scenario, let me just point out that all of the points on this portion of the curve have an x-coordinate which is greater than zero. And in fact I can specify that on the right hand side, all the points on the curve here have an x-coordinate greater than or equal to zero. Okay, now that I've gotten that out of the way, let me carry on. To calculate this enclosed area, the first thing we have to do is to rearrange the equation of the curve we have to make x the subject. In other words, I want this curve's equation written as x equals to some function, which I'll call g, of y. Well, let's see, we have y equals to the square root of x, and so to make x the subject, the first thing we need to do is get rid of this square root. For that, I square both sides, leading us to y squared equals to x. In other words, x equals to y squared. And we're done. We've now made x the subject. And in fact, I'll write a little one here as in step one. Now that that's done, I move on to step two. And in step two, I calculate this area by evaluating the following integral. And I'll just write area, area equals to the definite integral from one to four. Remember, we were calculating the area enclosed by the curve and the y-axis between y equals to one and four. And that's the integral of y squared. And I'm integrating with respect to y, so I write dy. Now that that's done, I integrate this in the usual way. And I can state that that's equal to one-third of y cubed with lower limit 1 and upper limit 4. And I like to take any factor like this one-third outside of this pair of square brackets to write that this equals to one-third times y cubed with lower limit 1 and upper limit 4. Finally, I calculate. That's equal to one-third times, in square brackets, 4 raised to the power of 3 minus 1 raised to the power of 3. Now 4 cubed is 64 and 1 cubed is 1, so we have 64 minus 1, which is 63. And so this equals to 1 third times 63. Finally, 1 third times 63 is equal to 63 over 3, and you can go ahead and check, but that leads us to the enclosed area equals to 21. And that's the answer. Okay, so that was the first scenario, in which all of the x-coordinates along the curve were greater than or equal to zero, and all we had to do was calculate the definite integral of g of y, which turned out to be y squared, between y equals to 1 and y equals to 4. Now let's look at the second scenario, and for that I'll consider a second function, which I'll go ahead and draw, I'll just need an xy grid here, there we go, x and y, and this time the function we'll be considering will be y equals to ln of x plus 1. And I'll write that, I'll just draw the curve first, passes through the origin, like so. Okay, that's y equals to ln of x plus 1. And now let's say we need to calculate the area enclosed by this curve and the y-axis for y values between negative 1 and 1. So let's see, that would correspond to this enclosed area and this enclosed area down here. And so we can see that in this case, the enclosed area is made up of two enclosed areas. One on the right-hand side of the y-axis, that's this one I'm hovering over right now, and another area on the left-hand side of the y-axis, that's this one here. And both of those areas are split at this point right here, which happens to be the origin in this example. So at this point, x equals to zero and y equals to zero. Now, I'm going to go ahead and shade these two areas, but I'm going to do so in two distinct colors. For the area on the right-hand side of the y-axis, I'll shade in blue, 
And for the area on the left hand side of the y-axis, I'll shade in this sort of dark pink or purple here. And here's why I'm shading these two areas in two different colors. The portion of the curve that encloses this blue area here is such that all of its points have an x-coordinate which is greater than or equal to zero. And consequently, we can calculate this blue area, which I'll just call A and I'll write it in blue, in exactly the same way that we calculated the area here in scenario one. In other words, we could state that the area here is equal to the definite integral from zero to one of g of y. And g of y is the expression we'll obtain when we rearrange this equation to make x the subject. On the other hand, for the second area we have here, the portion of the curve that encloses it is such that its points all have an x-coordinate which is less than zero. And I'll write that here, x is less than zero. And because of that, if I go ahead and calculate its area a in the same way that I calculate the blue area, in other words, if I just say that that's equal to the definite integral from negative one to zero of g of y, then the area that this will give us will be a negative area. And that's simply because g of y, which is the expression we'll get for x, will give us all of the x-coordinates of the points along the curve here, which are clearly negative. And so to counteract the fact that this would be a negative area, we need to consider the opposite of this definite integral. So I put this negative sign at the front here. And for those of you who are comfortable with the absolute value of a function, you'll probably have no trouble in seeing that I could calculate the total area, in other words, the sum of this area and this area, by using the following formula. The total area is equal to the definite integral from negative one to one of the absolute value of g of y. Indeed, calculating the total area this way will result in splitting this definite integral into two, and that will be at zero, and the first integral will be the one we see here, and the second will be the one we see in blue at the top here. All that being said, let's go ahead and calculate the total area. Remember, the first thing I need to do is to rearrange the expression we have here to make x the subject. And I'll do that here, starting from y equals to ln of x plus one. To get x outside of this ln function, the first thing I'll do is use the fact that if y equals to ln of x plus one, then e of y must equal to e of ln of x plus one. And now, since e and ln are inverse functions of each other, they cancel each other out, leading us to e of y equals to x plus one. Finally, subtracting one from both sides of this equation leads us to e of y minus one equals to x. In other words, x equals to e of y minus one. And that's the first step done. We now have an expression for g of y. And so I move on to step two. And in step two, I calculate the total area using this integral. And to save a bit of space, rather than writing total area, I'll just write A with a subscript capital T for total. So the total area is equal to the definite integral from negative one to one of the absolute value of G of Y, which is E of Y minus one. I now split this integral into two, and I do so at the value of Y at which this curve crosses the Y axis. So that's at zero. And so we have the definite integral from negative one to zero of the absolute value of e of y minus one, plus the definite integral from zero to one of the absolute value of e of y minus one. And these absolute values work in the following way. As soon as the expression e of y minus one is negative, then it turns it into its opposite. And as we've seen previously, e of y minus one, in other words, g of y, will be negative as soon as the x-coordinates on the curve are negative. And that's the case for this first area here. So from y equals to negative one up to y equals to zero, we can remove these absolute values by placing a negative sign in front of this expression. In other words, this turns into the definite integral from negative one to zero of the opposite of e of y minus one. For this second integral, on the other hand, we need to keep in mind that if the expression inside the absolute value is positive, then the absolute value does absolutely nothing at all, and we can remove it without changing a thing. Since this second integral corresponds to y values between zero and one, which corresponds to the area enclosed by this portion of the curve, 
we can see quite clearly that all of the x-coordinates of the points along this portion of the curve are greater than or equal to zero. And so this absolute value does nothing at all and can be removed. And so we have the definite integral from zero to one of e of y minus one. And now taking this negative sign outside of the integral, we obtain the following. The opposite of the definite integral from negative one to zero of e of y minus one, plus the definite integral from zero to one of e of y minus one, where I've changed the color of this first definite integral to highlight the fact that that corresponds to the area we had written down here. And now that all of that's done, let's go ahead and evaluate these integrals. And so let's see, for the first one that will lead us to the opposite of, in square brackets, e of y minus y, with lower limit negative one and upper limit zero, plus what we get from this second integral, which will be in square brackets, e of y minus y, with lower limit zero and upper limit one. That becomes the opposite of, in square brackets, e of zero minus zero, that's the upper limit, minus e of negative one minus negative one, that's the lower limit. I add to that what we get from the second integral, so that will be e of one minus one, minus e of zero minus zero. I carry on using the fact that e to the power of zero is just one, so this will be equal to one, and this e over here will equal to one, and e to the power of negative one is equal to one over e, and e to the power of one is just equal to e. And to carry on, let me make a tiny bit more space. There we go. This will equal to the opposite of, in square brackets, one minus zero, which is just one, minus, in parentheses, one over e, minus negative one. So that's plus one, close parentheses, and close square brackets. And I add to that e minus one, e minus one minus one minus zero, which is just one. We're nearly there, that first bracket turns into the opposite of one minus one over e minus one, plus the second bracket, which leads us to e minus one minus one, which is e minus two. And now in this first bracket, we have one minus one, which will cancel each other out, and I'll just cross those out. And now to get rid of the brackets, we consider the opposite of negative one over e. So that's equal to one over e plus e minus two. So I'll just write that, that's plus e minus two. And that's the total area. And I'll go ahead and box that. There we go. And there we have it. That's how we can calculate the area enclosed by a curve and the y-axis between two values of y. And that's it for this tutorial.